Happy New Year. Hopefully 2021 is better than 2020. Although it's getting off on kind of a shaky start, isn't it? <laughs> so I thought I'd hop on and just share some of my thoughts on projection mapping and kind of where we're thinking of going with the channel this year. Uh, I, I did some online polls with social media and I've been looking at the, the people that are following the channel and uh, there's a huge interest in projection mapping. But there's also some barriers to entry to, to make it accessible to, to, the, to everybody. Uh, the, the big barriers that I see is the first one is cost. Uh, to have a nice short throw projector can be expensive. Uh, the second barrier is experience or skill necessary in order to do the mapping and to do the, the effects. And then the third one is how much time it takes. Uh, you know, we were learning as we go with, with Buried Matter for the Halloween one, and it took us like eight months, I think, of development. And so cost, skill, experience, and time are, are barriers to entry. In fact, I've been fascinated by projection mapping for a long time, but it was those barriers that kept me from getting into it. Um, and and maybe I'll take a little detour and give you some background on, on Baird Manor. You know, we, we've been doing this amateur haunt for about 20 years, and uh, the first 10 years was mostly practical effects. Right? We had a lot of homemade animatronics with things like windshield wiper motors, uh, or we'd take a Jemmy product and we'd hack it to do what we want it to. And so it was mostly practical effects. We did some Pepper's Ghost effects and things like that too, and some mirrors. Um, but it was mostly physical props. Um, but I had friends like Dave Bates, who for at least 15 years now has been doing projection mapping. He was doing it before it was cool to do projection mapping. <laughs> and you got Matt Champney that's been doing it for a long time. And so I've always been inspired by what they were doing. But I didn't want to spend the money. And I, I was confident I could probably learn how to do it. I, I have an IT background, computer science degree. So I figured I could learn it, but it also didn't want to take the time to learn it and the time to develop it. And so I, I didn't really um, focus on that. It was, it was all just physical props. And then uh, a few years ago, I I'm, I'm keep getting drawn towards digital effects. And so I started sticking my toe in the water with the small, cheaper projectors, like $50 or less. And those are small enough and simple enough that next thing you know I got like a dozen of those projectors and doing Atmos effects videos and, and things like that. And then 2020 came along and you know all of us were stuck in quarantine and so that seemed like maybe this is the year to finally take the time to do projection mapping. Well I, I cheated a little. <laughs> so my, my nephew, his name is Alan, uh, he's the founder of Hauntworks. He has a lot of skill in Adobe After Effects as well as the whole Adobe suite. And so he already had the, the skills and the experience he needed to do the mapping. So I, <laughs> I, great, I accepted the proposal to be a guinea pig for him. <laughs> and I, I got the projector, so I fronted the cost of that. And then uh, he spent, I think, like I said, about eight months developing our Halloween show uh, in After Effects. And it was great. It was fun. Uh, we, we really enjoyed it a lot. The people that came by to see it really enjoyed it. And so now I'm trying to think where to, where to go next. E even with his skill and, and experience, it still took a long time. And he, he's picking up shortcuts and speeding things up here and there, making, finding efficiencies, but those barriers still exist. And so uh, this is a long way of me saying that I'd, I'd like to find a way for this channel to provide resources for making projection mapping more accessible to, to more people, to see if we can close the gap on those three challenges and, and make it easier for people to do this. Now the good news is, is this isn't a, a new pattern with technology. Uh, oftentimes technology starts out as being very expensive and requiring high level of expertise in order to use it and then over time if there's a demand for it and market for it then the technology improves to the point where the, anybody can do it. Even grandma can do it, right? Uh, it's kind of like the internet. You think about the internet back in the early days it was just the IT nerds that were using it and now literally everybody's using it and something a little closer to the holiday decorating uh, idea is synchronized lights synchronized lights used to be very much a novelty only a few people were doing it now i see them all over the place it's becoming much more commonplace 
And so that's the, the good news is, is that if, if there's a market for it, then the technology evolution is going to get to the point where it is easier, where it's going to be less expensive, it's going to take less skill and less time to produce shows. Some trade-offs with that still. One is oftentimes to make it easier for normal folks, for laymen to, to do it instead of the, the experts in the technology, then you lose some of the flexibility. In Adobe After Effects, you can do virtually anything you want. There's, there's the sky's the limit, and and so if we start start making that more accessible to people that don't have experience in that tool, oftentimes the trade-off is less flexibility. Uh, the other trade-off is the novelty starts to, to wear off if everybody's doing it. Synchronized lights when only a couple of people were doing it were wicked awesome, and the videos would go viral, and everybody loved it. And now my my boys, when we go out driving around, they're kind of bored <laughs> with the synchronized lights. Uh, I, I think the silver lining or the good news with projection mapping, though, is you can always keep it fresh because you can literally do anything. It's not physical lights on your house. It, you can project anything you want. You can change it up. You can change the story. It's You can always keep it fresh and interesting with projection mapping. So I'm rambling a little bit, but um, wh what I think we want to do with the channel in 2021 is is look along that evolution of technology and see where there might be some areas where we can close the gap for people sooner. So I'm, I'm going to be actively looking for ways that we can level up skill and experience and close that gap or find ways to make it easier. Uh, look for opportunities to keep the cost low so that people that, that don't have the budgets for these really expensive nice projectors can still do it and, and see if we can speed up development while balancing that with not limiting too much flexibility on it. So that's that's where I want to focus is on uh, in 2021 um, among some other projects that we have going um, but I want to see if we can if we can just make it easier faster cheaper to do it and uh, and have a little patience as we're waiting for the technology to improve because it will improve as time goes on. There are a, a couple companies out there that are trying to do the same thing. Uh, the first one that that I've been seeing some chatter with on social media seeing some questions and seeing some advertisements is Luxedo. Luxedo is trying to find a platform that anyone can use and still has the flexibility for somebody that's brand new and doesn't know what they're doing yet and someone that's an expert. And they have an all-in-one system that has the projector and it has the software and all that kind of stuff built into it. And, and so I ordered one of those. In fact, it came today, sitting over there. And so I'm going to, to review that and we'll see. We'll be able to see if that's helping to close some of these gaps and make it easier. Um, and, and we'll be able to do it from two different perspectives because I'm still pretty much a noob at the projection mapping stuff. I was able to, to, to benefit from my nephew doing the fancy stuff. And so we'll be able to get my perspective as someone trying to, to learn how to do it within their platform. And then we can also get Alan's perspective as someone that's more advanced and knows uh, the, the intricacies and and difficulties and all that kind of stuff in, in After Effects. So we'll be able to get both perspectives and and see uh, how well the platform works. Uh, another player that I've seen on the scene is Lightform. I don't have a Lightform yet, but that would be another one, I think, where they're trying to make it more accessible to more people. So we'll start, we'll have some videos on, on the Luxedo platform, and hopefully that will be interesting, and, and then you'll be able to, to see uh, if it's something that you want to add for the holiday season later this year. Uh, there's also a friend of mine uh, named Wesley Martinez that's trying to help close that skill and experience gap. Uh, he's going to be doing some online Zoom classes uh, at a very it's a very reasonable price to, to to do these Zoom classes. I think he's got six classes lined up so that you can learn how to do projection mapping. So I'll put a link to that in the description too. So that's kind of where how we're thinking of going with with the channel. And then I, I, the other thing I, I think I want to try to do is try to find good ways of, of merging practical effects with projection effects. This is one thing that's big with Disney, right? Uh, Disney has the projection mapping on the castle, but they're also using a lot of projection effects on their rides along with and incorporated with uh, practical and physical props. And we have some of this already in our, our haunt, but uh, that might be an area where we can use the smaller projectors, the cheaper projectors on smaller scenes uh, and still get some of the cool effects of, of projection mapping. So if you have any other thoughts, questions, requests on things that we could do to, to try to help 
get projection mapping more available to everybody, then feel free to comment or, or reach out. And that's kind of what we're looking at doing this year. So here's hoping we'll have a, a great 2021.